Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very special show coming right up. So what if you can read a book and it would change your entire life? That's exactly what today's show is all about. So we have two special guests today, Chef Charles Carroll and John David Mann, to talk to us about their new book, The Recipe, a story of loss, love, and the ingredients of greatness. So Chef Charles is an eight-time culinary Olympian who travels the world speaking on championship thinking and personal greatness. Chef Charles won his first Culinary Olympic gold medal in 1988 at the age of 24 and has since participated in the Olympics as a team member, coach, and judge. He was named one of the year's Great Country Inn Chefs by James Beard Foundation and is past president of the World Association of Chefs Society with over 10 million members in 105 countries. His work with U.S. troops in Afghanistan in 2011 and 13 is something Chef Charles is passionate about and was personally commended by U.S. Presidents Jimmy Carter, George W.H. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. In 2013, he was awarded the Honorable Order of St. Martin by the U.S. Army. So let's welcome to the show Chef Charles. Thank you so much, Marianne. So it's such a pleasure to be here today. I am just so thrilled to be spending this time with you. In fact, we were just chatting a little bit ahead of time here. My goodness, we know some of the, just some of these amazing people. And when John David Mann was telling me that he was doing this book with you, I, I had to get you on for an interview. I couldn't wait. <laughs> well, John, he's such a special guy. Isn't he? I mean, I'm... I'm uh... I'm just uh, counting my lucky stars every day when I uh, just to think that I have an opportunity to work with this guy. So, well, you know, but you're quite an inspiration yourself. I mean, you you've been to the Culinary Olympics. I mean, and a lot of people who, um, if they're aware of that, they know what a big deal that is. And for those that are new to that, that's that's quite a feat. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, anytime you can represent the United States in anything, you know, it's a pretty cool thing. So. I've been on. A, I've been on, had the opportunity to be a member of eight different Culinary Olympic teams as a competitor, uh, as a coach, as a consultant, kind of ambassador kind of thing, and then and then uh, eventually the um, uh, a manager. So it's it's uh, it's been a great ride, and and then of course the the final page of that is is ultimately being a judge, and and uh, you know I was only one of two judges from the United States. Uh, to be a judge of the World Culinary Olympics, so I, I was really proud of that. Mm. I can imagine. I mean, gosh, what a feat that is. And so I guess I'm getting the cart a little bit ahead of the horse here because I've been also wanting to ask you, like, what inspired you to become a chef? You know, cause it seems like it's such a great path. Well, my dad was a chef and my brother's a chef, and we grew up in a country inn in Vermont. And, and uh, as your listeners all know, when, you, when you're in a family business, uh, you know, you work eight days a week and you're doing chores and you're, you know, mm-hmm. mowing the lawns and sweeping the, sweeping the patios and shoveling snow and, you know, all the above. And I, and I started cooking breakfast for the guests at it when I was in the third grade and, and, um, you know, I was a, I was a gym rat. I was always around my dad's ankles and, and I want to be two things, you know, it'd be an NBA basketball player or the, or a chef and the five foot nine thing didn't quite work out for me. So, <laughs> so I ended up, uh, uh, keep them going with a chef thing, and and uh, from a very early on age. Hey, I I get it. I mean, I initially wanted to go into nursing, except blood makes me pass out, so that's not a good choice <laughs> either. Right. Right. So, but you know, it's so gosh, it's so great. I love to hear when people follow what inspires them in life, and it it sounds like you just everything was set up for you to really have a good start as a chef. Yes, you know, my mom and dad were, were brilliant and, and, um, you know, the work ethic was amazing and, and, you know, growing up in a, you know, I know a lot of great chefs out there, but I, I also know a lot of great chefs that can't walk into the dining room or, or give a presentation mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, I think growing up in a country inn where you're constantly on stage, you're, you constantly have guests in, in your house, 
was a was a great kind of um, uh, lesson, you know, to be around people all the time. So I'm grateful for that, and, and for my mom and dad being, uh, you know, being great teachers. Oh, you know, it, it says a lot about you too. I mean, and and then we get to the book, you know, mm-hmm. the recipe. And I, I mean, gosh, what. Your book is life changing, and I love how you have been able to work with you know one of my favorite people as well, John David Mann, and sure. who doesn't love Bob Berg? You know those guys from The Go Giver. You know, so it got to be able to work with him. And so, what was the inspiration like behind the book? And then, how did you get hooked up working with John? <laughs> so have you interviewed John yet? Uh, that might oh. change my story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, no, John and I are always talking, so yeah, no, no problem. Okay, I gotta tell the truth then. Okay, no, um, the uh, well, well, this is how. First, I gotta tell the story about the the. Uh, you know, I, I read the book, and the story I was gonna tell. You know, I was at home one day, and and John pinged me and said, "Hey, Chef Carol, uh, you know, I read your first two books, and I thought they were awesome, and I would love an opportunity to do a book with you." And and I wrote back to him, well, maybe, John, I'll think about it. But <laughs> it was the other way around, really. Um, I was having a cup of coffee, and, and I pinged him and said, hey, I love your book. And, and he, he replied, and I almost fell off my chair. And, and uh, so I, and then I said, hey, would you take a look at my first two books? I had Leadership Lessons from a Chef, Finding Time to Be Great is my first book, and then my second mm-hmm. one is Tasting Success. And so he said, sure. So I sent him those two. And then I said, hey, I got this, this other idea for a third book. And I described it to him. And John's a foodie, you know, and, and he loves the idea. And, and uh, so uh, I sent him the manuscript, and, and, and uh, I also sent in a box, uh, you know, some, some pasta and some truffle oil and some, you know, like a pesto or something like that. And I sent it off to him and, as, a, as a nice okay, little gift. Good. and. He totally yeah. just loved you from the beginning. I get this. You're you're obviously his favorite now. <laughs> uh, well, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that, yeah. You know, the well, yeah I, I, well, I think one of the reasons why he only said, well, he said yes because he knew he was going to eat well the next couple of years, you know. <laughs> oh. But, yeah. but it, it's taken us eight years to get this thing off the ground because he's crazy busy, and I had a lot going on in my world, and uh, – if he was open, I was closed. If I was closed, he was open, and it was just uh, so we, we. And here we are. We're just a, uh, you know, it's the the book is out now, and we're mm-hmm. just uh, we're so thrilled. And and man, I, I got to tell you, I I wrote it eight months eight years ago with a dream of it being a movie, and I'm so proud to tell you that we have somebody. We have a very 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 serious producer. Um, uh, uh, very curious about uh, taking the book on as a movie, so I couldn't Good. Watch it. It should be. I mean, this this would be one of those movies that I would go to see like three or four times in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so teed up to be a great movie. So, um, I mean, how many great food movies are, are there out there? And then I can only count about five, you know. And and I just think that this is going to be awesome. I think it's going to be fabulous too. And you know what? A great collaboration between. You know, you and John, and I, I can understand, I mean, we know John's busy, but I can understand you being so busy, too, because you're also involved in um, in a, oper- it's called Operation Hot, did I get that right? Yeah, um, I I, uh, I created and, 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 and organized and funded uh, called Operation Hot, Honoring Our Troops, and I did that in 2011 and 2013, and it takes about a year, a little over a year to to prepare for each one, and, and basically uh, a team of 20 celebrities and another support team of 10 from Kuwait that I hired, uh, 30,000 pounds of show gear, and um, and the last time we went, we did five shows. We gave away five coming gifts and, and, and uh, fed 5,000 troops of Cajun Creole meal in the middle of the war zone in Afghanistan. So that was all completely done from my office, and and uh, I'm the only civilian in the history ever to do such a thing because you know, the only way you're going to go to a war zone is through US, US, uh, USO or, or MWR. And, and uh, yeah. so, I've, yeah, it was it was a, one of the most amazing times of my life. Well, gosh, yeah, I'm a big supporter of our veterans, and I just wanted to say thank you for all the work that you're doing with Operation Hot because, my goodness, I mean, they really need 
it not only to have like a home cooked meal by a celebrity chef every once in a while, <laughs> but you know to have that attention and to let people know that hey, we're thinking about you and we care. Yeah, you know what? Well, that was uh, that was one of the most amazing things once I got over there because you know obviously it was my dream to do this and you know worked mm-hmm. on it for 13, 14 months prior to getting over there, um, but I wasn't prepared really um, mentally. If I was the MC, I was the head of the thing. I had to control everybody. I had to line everybody up. I had to get every, you know, it was a lot to do. And uh, but I, what I wasn't mentally prepared for is is some of the questions or some of the uh, some of the conversations you have with the troops. And and um, so we were giving away a lot of hugs. It was really emotional. Um, we saw a lot of crazy things. And and. Um, I had a four or five people talking to me about suicide and and why they didn't know why they were there and so it was a it, it was special um, it, it was it was quite a quite a time it, you know it, I wasn't getting shot at and it took me a good two three weeks to you know get back to normal once I got back it was just it was that crazy. I'm sure the environment's intense I couldn't even imagine what our troops go through. Mm. So but again, thank you for being there and and. Gosh, and if you know, I know we're kind of off on a little tangent here, but if people want to donate or become involved in Operation Hot, how do they do that? Well, I appreciate that. Um, I, I would go again tomorrow if I could, but um, I'm, I'm not right now. We're not planning another another tour, um, mm-hmm. not as of yet. i am never say never, but uh, uh, as of right now, we're not we're not setting another one up. So, okay. Well, you know, we're we're going to be watching you because, like, gosh, you've got so many different things that you're involved in. You've got a podcast. You're this amazing chef. I mean, you're you've got your hand in many pies, and that is I'm going to laugh on that one. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's uh, you know, you just keep throwing things up on the wall and see which ones stick. And if you, you know, the percentages are better, I Marianne. Mean, if you if you throw more, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I'm blessed. I, I'm at a really happy place, and, and my in my life right now where, you know, I mean, that's what we do, right? We scratch and climb and we work hard mm-hmm. to be successful. And then all of a sudden, you know, one or two doors open and, and all of a sudden three doors open and it's getting exciting. So we're excited about the movie. I'm working on a children's book with my daughter and, and I'm more probably more thrilled about, even though it's probably going to cost me more money we're going to make, but I'm, I'm just excited to, to work with my daughter on the project. Uh, um, so that's going to be fun. And, in the podcast, it's called a recipe podcast, uh, Celebrity mm-hmm. Secrets to a Successful Life, and you're very kind to support that. And um, yeah, so we're having a lot of fun, and, and it's all about touching people's hearts too, as you know. That's what you do. You're an expert in the field, and and um, and when you make your dreams uh, about other people, and, and to try to help other people enjoy their life as much as you do, and then things start to happen quicker. Yeah, and life just becomes more fun. Well, and you know. Gosh, and to kind of get back to your book, mm. I mean, you really you did such a wonderful job with that. And I, from what I understand, because you know I did chat with John, and he's going to be coming up right after we chat with you here. That um, so the book was written from you know kind of a kid's perspective and and how the story is related. How did you come up with with the storyline for this? Is it based on something through your life, or were you inspired in some way for that? Yeah, I was totally inspired. Um, it, it, You know, the, the scene is in New England, and I grew up in New England, in Vermont, and um, mm-hmm. I grew up in a town called St. Johnsbury, Vermont, and my dad owned a brownstone uh, uh, bakery or din- dinette there, and it was called Mapletown Dinette. And and so the the uh, John was creative enough to keep that same theme of Mapletown, but we call the town Mapletown. And, um, you know, for the readers, for the listeners out there, you know, it's about a book that a boy loses at a very young age. He, he kind of spirals down, gets himself in a bunch of trouble, and, and a crusty old diner chef sees this happening, so he reaches out and to try to help the boy, and uh, each chapter is a life lesson, and each chapter they cook something. And um, that kind of ties it in. I mean, food is so special, and, and, it, and it has, it's such a big part of our lives in so many ways, and, and it can relate to life in so many different ways. It, 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 the book is just so beautiful in that respect. And, and I wanted it to be an emotional roller coaster. You know, my first two books, are, I'm proud to say, are being used in 
close to 70 schools now all around the country and parts of the world. They're, they're in the hospitality schools for team building and so on. And I wanted to write a book that you would see at the airport or Barnes & Noble or anywhere, really, and, and, and first of all. And then second of all, you know, I wanted to dream about the whole thing, and and I wanted to... I wanted to touch people's hearts um, uh, with the story. And one of our, uh, the best, one of the best uh, we heard several times from our launch team was that uh, the book stayed with them two, three weeks after they read the book. And um, that's special. And so that's kind of, so that's answer to one of your questions. The other question, the other answer is, um, it's a lot about, it's not a true story, but it's a lot about me. There's a lot of things in the book. And, I use my, you know, my my mom and my and my aunt's names in the books because they were actually waitresses in the diner and and you know I had an opportunity to go to the White House several times and and the Olympic golds are in there and and the TV shows and you know so there's a lot of things that that have happened in my life that are in there but it's not a true story um, about me. Uh, it's definitely it, it's such a well written story. That I mean, I I agree with you. I think like every every young person should have this book. Every every adult should have this book, and because it gives such a a great insight in just living life in a better way. Mm, yeah, and, and you know, well, I had eight eight or nine chapters I sent John, but you know, after all, I'm I'm a cook. That's what I do. That's what that's what my profession is. John is one of the best writers in the country, and. Mm-hmm. And you know, man, how blessed am I to partner with him? And so, you know, my what I sent him were, you know, were my version of a cook's book, and 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 you know, it was black and white, and he turned it into color and 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 widescreen and HD and you name it. I mean, that's 3D. I mean, he, you know, John's a, John is such a, a master at this. Well, you know, I think it takes two to tango here because you've got some. Insanely great recipes at the end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny that we were talking. Should we do it or should we not do it? And and uh, mm-hmm. you know I often get you know asked you know you know who's the book for? Well, it's for everybody. You know, and mm-hmm. anybody who likes food, and that's basically everybody. And and so so that's why we decided to put the recipes in there. And and uh, each story of the, you know John and I actually cook together. We we've, we've done several uh, food. Uh, uh, video demonstrations, and um, so that that some of the you know we're using it for bonus material for the book, and and uh, so we had fun with that. But you know, food is so so, so much part of life, and and the life lessons in there. And and actually, we do have some schools that that are actually taking a look at it for uh, to be part of the program. Well, okay, so I've seen you, I've seen your guys's some of your Facebook lives and different stuff like that, and it looks like. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It looks like John's really he's really participating in the eating. You know? <laughs> okay, you you said it, yeah. I didn't say that. But yeah, you know what? That's like I said, he uh you know, he knew, I think he said yes because he knew he was gonna eat well. So you know, I I was doing the cooking and John was doing the eating and and then the you know what's funny? You know, we had a couple of long days there, and, and uh, mm-hmm. I'd be darned. You know, he didn't hold back. <laughs> he wasn't just facing for the camera. He was eating all day and enjoying it, so we had fun. Well, when you make things like candy bacon, I mean, who's going to turn that down? Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, so, gosh, so the books, you know, we're not going to really talk too much about it, about the recipe. I think everyone needs to go out and pick up their own copy. I've got my copy. I've actually been giving away Kindle copies for friends, and that's, you know, what a great um, – if, if you have friends that instead of giving them Starbucks, I mean, everyone can get coffee. Give them a book that lasts forever, mm-hmm. you know, and it's got great recipes in the back, like Owen's favorite hot chocolate, which I will that's be right. making later. <laughs> that's right. But, so, you know, so we've got a movie coming for this, and they're looking at that. So what else is on the docket for you? Are you going to be, um, like, traveling around the country speaking? Because I know that this is making such a huge wave. Well, thank you for that. And um, We are going to, you know, I used to speak uh, roughly 30 times a year in, in all around the country and parts of the world, and then I got kind of got interrupted when I was a world president for World Association of Chef Society, so that kind of took the wind out of me for a little bit. But 
we're going to get back up on that horse. So, so starting next year, we're going to start doing some more speaking and, and um, book signings. Um, I, I am uh, knock on wood. I, I, I hope that the, the movie thing uh, happens. It, it seems like the stars are really lined up on it, and, and um, uh, it, it feels and sounds like destiny, but we'll see. But if it does, and I'm hoping that we're heavily involved. I hope John and I are heavily involved in the in the screenwrite of it, and so that's fun. The podcast, as you know, is a lot of work. Um, uh, the recipe podcast, uh, Celebrity Secrets of a Successful Life, uh, but we're really having a lot of fun with that, and we're getting a lot of great um, feedback and responses from that. And some really special people. The the show is kind of set up uh, fun, where we can have a celebrity or an expert in the field at the beginning of the show, and then we have what we call a chef um, uh, apprentice segment, where we have a an individual who's experienced success at a very young age at the end of the show. So it's a nice dynamic. So we have fun with that, and of course, my daughter's children's book, and we have a TV show we're working on. And then, uh, other than that, we're, we're just kind of taking it easy. Yeah, it's just a few things to keep you busy, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, hey, we know this book, The Recipe, is for everybody. Yeah. So, you know, what, it, and we, you know, we're not going to get again into the book because I really feel people need to buy their own book. I love it. I absolutely love the book. But, you know, what would you like the readers to take away, regardless what their ages are? Well, you know, you know, for 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 several of our readers, um, that, like I mentioned to you before, several of them mm-hmm. have said it just stayed with them. So, I mean, for that reason alone, I mean, uh, to, for a book to have that much of an impact on on the decisions that Owen the boy made, and and, and how the chef was so masterful in, in how he. Uh, uh, handled Owen and how he allowed Owen to make his own choices and how he so wonderfully diffused so many different uh, situations. And there's so many life lessons. In fact, we even list them out, um, the chef's rules of the kitchen and the chef's rules for living, um, that, you know, I, I think it's really going to strike a chord with you and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you think. You know, every once in a while you do those interviews or, or you read a book or, you know, every once in a while someone will say something that just stays with you. It's like, wow, what they said was so profound and so brilliant that you were so grateful that you heard it. I did a, I did an interview the other day, and I had to listen to it again another three or four times and write it down. I was, that, what the gentleman said, was, it, it just resonated so dearly with me. And, that, and that's kind of like what the book is, I think. It, it, um, it's, a, it's a special story that takes you on an emotional roller coaster ride. And John likes to say it's kind of like Julia Child meets Karate Kid. Um, uh, so I mean we have we have fun with it and and um, you know it's nothing like you know kind of uh, taking yourself out for a little bit and, and, and enjoying a book but also having it uh, stay with you and and a little life lessons at the same time is pretty cool. Well, I, my thing is the holidays are right around the corner and for those people you know because I know quite a few people they've got everything so what do you get yeah. somebody that has everything or someone that needs inspiration. And your book is perfect for them because regardless where people are in their walk of life, your book has these golden nuggets of wisdom that people can take, you know, kind of take with them through the rest of their life. It's, it's the book that makes an impact. It really is. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, do you know, gosh, it's a, um, before we go, and we're kind of – Gosh, we're, we're, we could be Chatty Cathy's here. Um, where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community? I appreciate that. Um, the, uh, we're, we're having a lot of fun right again. We were talking about the, the Recipe Podcast, so we can find that anywhere where you listen to podcasts. So that's the Recipe Podcast of Chef Charles Carroll, Celebrity Secrets of Successful Life. That's one place. Also, my website, ChefCharlesCarroll.com, Chef Charles Carroll, C-A-R-R-O-L-L.com. And then, of course, you need to go out and buy the book, be a part of something fun, and, and watch this thing unfold. And we'll try to stay current on our Facebook and Twitter uh, and kind of um, – I, I don't want to talk about it too much yet, but if we can get some kind of signatures on some Donna lines, I'll share the whole experience with you uh, as the book becomes a movie. But we'll wait and see how that happens. But the, to buy the book is – when that happens. Right, exactly. <laughs> when it happens. I've been talking about it for seven years, so I really feel good about it. But the uh, – the book is is the um, the ingredients of greatness dot com. The, mm-hmm. the ingredients of greatness dot com. Go out and buy it for the holidays and and um, 
or my website, either way. But I sure do appreciate you having me on, and and um, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, you know, I, I just so appreciate your book and your time. I mean, you're such an inspiration to so many people, Chef Charles. And, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Marilyn. Okay, we're going to pause here for a quick break. Next, we're going to have John David Mann is coming right up. He's the other half of this book. So we're going to pause here, and we'll be right back. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com this is Jennifer McGill. My highly anticipated new album, Unbreakable, is now available at jennifermcgill.com. Everything from power ballads to high energy jam out in your car songs, I used my highest joys and deepest pains to create empowering songs of love, strength, healing, and restoration so that you can be unbreakable too. Get your copy of Unbreakable today from jennifermcgill.com. Because who doesn't want to be unbreakable? The highly acclaimed and newly released book, The Hand Part 2 by Lynn Van Prague Grattan, describes the journey between a psychic medium and a family who lost a son. Messages from Beyond Eternity's Gate is of love and healing. For more information, visit www.lynnvanprague-grattan.com. That's www.lynnvanprague-grattan.com. To Moments with Marianne. I'm so excited to be introducing our next guest, John David Mann. So John is an award-winning author whose writings have earned him countless awards. His books have been published in more than two dozen languages and sold over two million copies. He's the co-author of the international bestseller, The Go-Giver, with Bob Berg, the New York Times bestseller, The Red Circle with Brandon Webb, and many more other literary works. So let's welcome to the show, John David Mann. Thank you, Marianne. It is, as <laughs> always, a delight to be here. It's such a joy to have you here, John. And my goodness, I mean, we just finished talking to Chef Charles, and now we get to talk to you. How exciting is that? He is something else. He's uh, he and I have become pretty pretty close brothers in the process. Yeah, do you know? I think you made out like a bandit though, because I've been seeing the recipes and the different things he's cooking for you on Facebook. So you know, <laughs> I'm just wondering when I'm going to get invited to one of those meals. You know, <laughs> so. when when you are, don't turn it down. Oh, I won't. They look absolutely <laughs> delightful. And, and just like this book, my goodness, I mean, what a great read. How did you get involved in all this? I mean, we heard what Chef Charles said, but I'd like to get your take on it. Yeah. You know, and by the way, uh, cooking with him really is a cool experience. And I'm going to get back to that in a, little, in a little bit. I don't want to let that drop. But so how did this happen? Well, uh, you know, 
it was a lot like the way I got involved with the Go Giver and Bob Berg. Honestly, uh, uh, you know, Chef Charles contacted me out of the blue. I didn't know who he was, and he had said, I, "You know, I'm reading the, the Go Giver. I'm using it with my staff, and I love it." And uh, you know, it's this executive chef from a country club in Houston, Texas. I thought, how cool is that? He's using the go-giver with his staff as like a management tool. I think it was awesome. So he said, I have this. Uh, uh, for, first off, he said, I'd love to have you come out and, and give a talk. You know, that's not what I do, Marianne. I, I don't I don't go out and give talks. It's not my business model. <laughs> I, I stay home and write. I like to say that Bob Berg gets me chained in the basement. That's not actually true, but... Uh, <laughs> I stay home and I write. So I, I, I cook with my wife. We take walks. I sit at my desk. I sit in my armchair. I write. I have a dog. You know, this is my life. Mm-hmm. I don't travel. I, when I was young, I used to fly around the, the country giving talks. That's not what I do anymore. But I said yes for some reason. And uh, he got a plane ticket for me. I flew out to Houston. I gave a talk on The Go-Giver. And we, and we, you know, became fast friends. And he said, I had this idea for a story. He told me the idea in a nutshell. And I was hooked. Wow. And if I had a dime for every time I've heard someone say to me, hey, I got this idea for a story. We should write it together. I would be just ridiculously. Well, I would own my own island. But Chef Charles said that. And when he told me a story, I just I knew I wanted to do it. Fourteen year old boys, young boys just lost his dad. He's angry at the world, torn up inside. He crosses paths with this crusty old diner chef who teaches him how to cook in the kitchen. Life learning ensues. And I thought, Karate Kid meets Master Chef. Mm, mm, mm. I got to do that. I've got to do that. The idea of combining personal growth and life principles, success principles with a food environment, cooking, I just thought that was just so far out. I had to do that. So uh, the idea was born immediately. That was 2009. It took us years to carve out the time to make and, and, and do it together. But but we did. And we not only wrote the book together, we wrote Produced, you know, designed, published, mark, pro, everything. We're, we're doing the whole thing from soup to nuts ourselves. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I just got my book in the mail and it's phenomenal. I, I mean, I love my book. Mm-hmm. And you, it, it was so well written. And I love how you guys integrated the food aspect to it because that's kind of where people come together. You know, it's a, and it's over meals. It's, it's sometimes in the kitchen. It's the kind of just where people come together and they can just be themselves. Yeah. Yeah. The kitchen is, uh, you know, for a lot of people, the kitchen is the center of the home. It always has been, it isn't for every household, but I think it should be. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I think it's the natural center of the home and food is, is, and Charles probably said this on your, on your interview, but, but food is the place where, you know, where people come together. You, 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 you don't invite someone over and say, Hey, let's get, get together at my house and, you know, and write some legal briefs or, you know, let's, let's go hang out Saturday and maybe hang some shingles. No, you, you say, let's, let's get together and, you know, and have a meal, sit down, have a glass of wine or have a, have a cup of tea or have a cup of coffee or may, have a sandwich or whatever. It's like, it's such an integral part of our social being. And, uh, you know, recently Shep went through this Hurricane Harvey in, uh, in Houston, very much like the scene we write about in the book. Mm-hmm. When Chef is telling Owen about the the disaster in the Midwest that he had, he was called out. Chefs are often the first people they call. They say, "Can you come out and cook for the first responders and for some of the the you know the displaced?" And yeah, food is it doesn't get more basic than food. Well, and to have, I think it's a story that so many people can relate to right now, especially with all the different disasters that have been going on across the country. You know, they kind of look at this as kind of, gosh, you know, a story that can give hope and give inspiration. Well, you know, the subtitle, the subtitle is a story of loss, love and the ingredients of greatness. And and that only that wasn't what we set out to call it. That subtitle didn't really happen until we were, you know, most of the way finished the book, because, you know, you think you know what you're going to write and. There's always this process of discovery where as you're in the middle of it, it's kind of like the way you live your life. You th- maybe you think when you're 20 years old, you know what your life's going to be. And then you, you find things don't work out the way you expect. And you meet people you didn't expect to meet. And you bump into opportunities you didn't count on. And, you know, tragedies happen and difficulties happen. And uh, life unfolds. Writing a book is like that. It, it's not everything you expect. It's more. But it's different. And so that subtitle really is kind of a map 
of human experience for me. Uh, um, we, we haven't all been through hurricanes or forest fires. We haven't all lost our father at the age of 14. But we've all suffered through some kind of loss. We've all had some kind of difficulty or possibly tragic experience happen. And, you know, someone dying isn't the only tragedy. Uh, maybe, you ha- maybe you had a friend that you trusted and then they betrayed you or that you lost or they moved away or you had a business you know, that went out. I, I've, I've been through bankruptcy court. I know what the inside of that place looks like. I've lost a child. I know what that's like. I've lost parents. I know what that's like. We've all lost things in our lives. Um, and so that's kind of a map of, uh, it starts with loss, um, which is which is where a lot of stories begin, either loss or in the case of Joe in the Go, in the go Giver, it's fear of loss, <laughs> mm-hmm. impending loss. And, and in the course of the book, there's a lot of, there are different kinds of love that 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 uh, Owen the boy stumbles into in the book. Um, there's the love of a boy and his father, the love of um, a mentor and his charge. There's but there's also the love of you know uh, uh, of of food, the love of creation, the love of excellence, the love the passion for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and somewhere in the course of the book, the the boy sort of taps into this passion for cooking that the, that the chef knows is in there. Um, so it, it's love is often a, a rope bridge that carries us across the chasm between the, the cliff we're standing on and, and the mountain on the other side that, that, you know, this chasm created by loss. So it's like, yes, it is a book about success and the ingredients of success and the ingredients of greatness, but it's also a book about the human journey that happens to get to to that place of greatness. Yeah. And, you know, and again, it's like this story that so many people can relate to, you know, when you've had any kind of loss, any kind of tragedy in your life, you know, and then being able to see a way out and, and have hope for, you know, for yeah. just for the future is such a big thing. Yeah. 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 There's a, um, you know, to me, the, the, the book is obviously about the boy, about Owen. Mm-hmm. It follows his journey. But look at it in another way. You sort of turn the story around and look at it from behind. It's also the mentor's story um, because you, you watch how this chef deals with the boy through the story. And it's something that, that, again, as I say, it only unfolded as we wrote. It wasn't really planned out. And I have so much admiration for this guy because he's suffered some tragedy himself and he's suffered a lot of hardship. And and, uh, and we learn more about that as the book progresses. There's more to the chef than meets the eye. And we learn a lot about him only toward the end of the book. But he he has, the way he treats the boy is very delicate in a way because this is a hurting kid and you can't just take a kid like this and say do this do that and feel this way it's like he's fragile Mm -hmm. so he's very hands-off he's very inexpressive he's very he he doesn't say much but then there are moments where he surprises himself and the boy and and the reader and frankly the authors or he surprises us all by by suddenly saying things we didn't think he'd say and he confronts the boy at one point about you know, the fact that his father died and he says, you know, I know that if people have told you this, they've told you that time will heal your wounds and that, that God has a plan and that there is, a, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's all well-meaning stuff, but I know it, none of it helped you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the tricky thing about about loss is you tend to go into your own, own corner and isolate and feel like that nobody in the world knows what you're going through but you. And yeah. no one has ever suffered what you're suffering. You know, they say that the uh, uh, the whole world smiles with you when you laugh, but when you cry, you cry alone. Mm-hmm. I think that's where the boy is at at the start of the story. He he feels like he's alone in the world. And how do you reach someone in a place like that? That's to me, the book is in a way it's an exploration of of both. How do you get through lost yourself, but also from the other side, how do you reach out to somebody who's suffering, and uh, and and be their rope bridge? Yeah. Uh, and and you know, and this book is such a great inspiration of hope, and I mean, I just I thoroughly enjoyed it. And we don't want to give too much of it away. I mean, we've talked a little bit about it, but everyone should go out and buy their own copy of the recipe. And and I mean, my goodness, I mean, you believed in this book so much, you guys went and put it out there yourself. 
Yeah, yeah, we did. And it was and it wasn't a light decision because honestly, self-publishing is is well, publishing is not what either one of us do. It's not mm-hmm. my history. It's not certainly isn't Chef Charles's. And we're both insanely busy. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> neither, I'm of sure. us, neither of us had five minutes spare time. But you've already heard what Chef Charles does when he has no spare time, right? Oh, Afghanistan yeah. and <laughs> Yeah, he's all over the map serving meals. Literally. to our soldiers, you know? So yeah, my goodness. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So this is like that. You know, we, we didn't have time, but we decided it was worth it to us um to get this out there. So yeah, yeah, we decided to do it. And and it's it's now officially our entrepreneurial labor of love. Well I'm so glad that you guys did because it's one of those books you know, there are a lot of books that people pick up over their lifetime and they may, you know, lend to friends and what have you. This is a book you keep and then you buy copies for your friends so you don't uh, give yours away. <laughs> well, I appreciate hearing that. So I, yeah. Well, and so with this book, where do you see this going? Do you guys have any events coming up? What are What's in store um, now that this book has been released? Uh, the end of the of the month, this month of October 2017, I'm heading off to Houston. We're going to do a book signing together, a book event, and I'm going to be back in his kitchen. I went to his kitchen last uh, this last past summer, oh. and we spent a few days cooking together, and we actually brought a video crew in and shot some video, which we don't have this up yet on the website, but at some point this fall, once the, the, the project is finished, we'll have some video up there of, of Chef... Uh, doing cooking some of the recipes in the book and of uh, the two of us talking about them and I get to do some eating I even get to do a little bit of a little bit of uh, vegetable cutting I get to cut an onion um, <laughs> and I also make chef cook an omelet blindfolded which is uh, which was fun uh, I get to put him in the spot um, so we, we had fun doing that and you know the video crew got kind of hammered by Hurricane Harvey so it's way past yeah. schedule but we're going to get that up on the website you know eventually and so I'm going to go back again back to his kitchen and we're going to do a, a, a book signing a book event and uh, we'll just keep talking about it because you know uh, we've, we've been through the book launch now but mm-hmm. I look at a book launch not as like a rocket ship launch where you would get escape velocity, otherwise you crash and burn, and you uh, and then you go off to the moon. I look at it as launching a ship. You know, you yeah. get, the, get the ship out on the ocean, and now it has a voyage around the world. And, and our book has just launched, and it's now got to got to go off on its voyage around the world. So we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about it for a long time. Oh, I'm sure you will. And there's this book is gonna make waves because the story is timeless. You know, just kind of like what you and Bob have created with The Go-Giver. I mean, the recipe is a timeless story. And let's face it, Marianne, it's about food. I mean, there's food. (laughs) Did I mention that there's also food? (laughs) It's funny because there's... There's a lot of cooking in the book. I mean, there's 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 legitimate, genuine cooking technique from a, a world class chef. And I'll sp- I'll tell you, I spent a lot of time in my kitchen, walking back and forth from kitchen to desk and desk to kitchen mm-hmm. while I was writing because I did a lot of this stuff myself. And uh, you know, when you read the book, you may cry at parts, you may laugh at parts, but I promise you this: you're going to get out of the book. Uh, with more excitement for your kitchen than you had before. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the most fabulous thing is that there are all these fat. Oh my God! There's these great recipes at the back of the book. Yes, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the first book I've ever written where there are actually recipes in the back of the book. The very last recipe is the recipe that you see on the cover of the book, where you see this plate of blueberry pancakes with a single peach rose in a, oh. in a one stamp vase, and and that um, that that. That scene, that picture has a, a very powerful meaning, which I hope to get to. But first, I'll say that the pancake recipe, that's my wife's recipe. It's the only recipe that didn't come from Chef Charles. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been eating that blueberry pancake recipe for years. And um, it's simple, but it's fabulous. You must make the recipe. It's the last recipe in the uh, in the. Um, I'm looking at it (laughs) in the book. Yeah, I'm looking at it. And, you know, it's especially based on your recommendation. I'm going to I'm going to go in and make that as well and check that out. Got to have real maple syrup. It's a a month. (laughs) So So can I tell you the story of the of the of the picture? 
Oh, please do. So I, I knew once the book was was with the draft was done, I knew what had to go in the cover. Uh, and it took a while because it had a lot of different covers that we tried out. But um, I have a uh, friend who's a watercolor artist in Maine mm-hmm. who does Maine scenes, oceans and boats and this and that. And she did this for us, this picture of the um, of the plate of blueberry pancakes with a with a single peach rose. So. Um, just for listeners, this is a scene that takes place. I think it's in chapter two of the book. The boy is remembering this scene and it happened years earlier when his dad was still living and when the boy was only eight or something. And every, uh, uh, he, he remembered being in the, coming down to, to the kitchen on a Saturday morning and his dad was cooking breakfast for his mom, breakfast in bed, Saturday morning. His father's famous blueberry pan, oat blueberry pancakes. So he comes down and he's he's watching the, the recipe get made, and he says to his dad, "What makes your t- pancakes taste so good? Is it like the blueberries, the fresh blueberries?" His father's like, "No, it's not the blueberries." And he says, "Is it the the oat flour? You know, is it the maple syrup? Is it the honey? Is it?" His father's like, "No, no, no." And he gets down the boy's level. He looks him in the eye and says. The secret ingredient, Owen, isn't anything in the pancakes. The secret ingredient is who you're making them for. Mm. And that, for me, is the core message of the book. You know, that's that's the scene that Owen remembers at the end of the book, too. It comes back. Um, so that's the um, that's kind of the heart and soul of the story. And that's that's what's there on the cover. And it's delicious. <laughs> well, and and this book is filled with so many of those type of quotes that just have you pause. And when we talked about a few of them with Chef Carol, um, with Chef Charles, in regards to, you know, just um, there was one about Owen asking himself a question. You know, is he going to make something of himself, or is he just based? I'm really kind of ad living here. Is, is he just not going to do anything and just right. waste his time? And so there are many quotes in there that just make you like stop and really think. You know, so it's not while it's a. It, it, I found it to be a very easy book to read, but it and it also would pull at your heart, but it also has you engaged where you're like, wow, okay, you know that that's some pretty powerful stuff. Well, it's funny because, um, you know, as with Bob Berg, I did uh, the heavy lifting in terms of writing, but I'll t- mm-hmm. that line you're quoting. Um, so here's the here's the question you need to ask yourself: Are you going to, you know, spend the rest of your rest of your life trying to trying to get even, or are you going to get up your off your butt and make something out of yourself, mm-hmm. do something with your life? That was pure Chef Charles. That came right from him. <laughs> some of the best lines in the book came right from him, and some <laughs> have no idea which, which which one of us they came from. That's the way it often works out. Oh my good! I would have thought that that one came from you. You know, I was not. I, was, I didn't know that that came from Chef Charles. So, you know, but it's it's interesting because you know it's it's knowledge that people know, but it's put in a way and and in, in, it's just intermingled in the story in such a way that it just causes you to pause. Well, you know, I've written a lot of different kinds of books. I've written memoirs of Navy SEAL snipers and business mm-hmm. books and 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 so forth. But this is my favorite kind of writing, a simple story that that you hope in the end proves to be not so simple, after, at least not not shallow, simple, but not shallow, simple, mm-hmm. but with some depth to it and with some real human experience to it. Yeah. So, I mean, and food. Did I mention there's food? Yeah, there's lots of really good food. <laughs> good food, and, and not only that, it's not just like it's just not a food tease. I mean, there are actual recipes that you can follow, and they're fabulous, fabulous. So, you know, another thing too, when you look at who the intended um, reader for your book is, what are your thoughts? Because I personally think that it's for anybody. Was it intended for a certain audience? You know, that's a great question because that was the question publishers asked when we brought it to them. So like, who's this book for? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's really for, I, I had a person in mind and the person in mind is someone who loves personal growth who is always reading about it, studying it, personal growth, uh, personal development, leadership, principles of, of success, that kind of thing, and loves good food. Mm-hmm. That's the person. Now, I don't know if that's male, female, young, old, East, West, Democrat, Republican, you know, white, black, brown. I, I have no idea who that person is. I think it's all the above, though. Um, I think it fits all those categories, but it's a person who who loves stories about personal growth 
and you know who might love to read The Alchemist or The Little Prince or The Richest Man in Babylon or The Greatest Salesman in the World or The Go-Giver or stories like that, uh, Shawshank Redemption, stories that are timeless, that, that, that are about uh, a character coming into, into his full experience of life. And who love food. <laughs> did I miss Snickers food also? I may have forgot to mention I, the food part. I think he did. I think he did mention that. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's, it's funny because food is, is, is huge now. But, you know, there's, when you think about it, there, there's this handful of movies like Chocolat or like Chef mm-hmm. or like, uh, you know, there's a Julia and Julia. There's a handful of movies where, where food has really been, and, and the cooking of food in the, in the professional mm-hmm. kitchen has been a central theme, but not very many. You think about how many movies have involved sports like baseball or golf or being a spy or being a Wall Street trader or being a fireman or, mm-hmm. you know, there's like dozens and dozens. But food is like just becoming a thing that becomes part of stories. Uh, and we wanted to do personal growth and food, you know, the karate kid meets master chef. Um, so, you know, we see this as a as a as a movie on the page. And then there is, and I'm sure Chef Charles mentioned this because he never fails to mention it. There is, mm-hmm. in fact, movie interest. We can't say who, because if we did, we'd have to, you know, but. Well, you uh, know people that could do that, too, so I take you serious. <laughs> <laughs> right. I a couple, couple of it's military guys. And I grew up in New Jersey. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Well, do you know, hey, and I think that's great. I can easily see this book becoming a movie. And as soon as that is locked in, I mean, we want to hear about it. And so other, I mean, the recipe is a fabulous book and everyone needs to get out, you know, go purchase their copy. I mean, the holidays are coming up. So you want to get your copy and give it away to as many of your friends as possible. It's it's one of those books that people hold on to for a lifetime. So I I just can't recommend it highly enough. And I want to I, I want to stress that um, although it is a book about loss, it ha- it does have a happy ending. I mean, we do get somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's not, <laughs> is is it a tearjerker? It is. Should you read it with a box of Kleenex handy? You should. Uh, will Will you find it depressing? No, you absolutely will not. Uh, this is this is not terms of endearment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Some cries are good to have. You know, That's right. <laughs> so, feel better afterwards. That's right. <laughs> So, you know, I always know that you're, I mean, gosh, you're such a great writer, John. So I'm sure that you are probably working on a few other things. Um, yes. I, so what what's going on with you? What else do you have coming up? On the horizon. Uh, Bob Berg and I have a new Go-Giver book coming out next spring. Uh, it's called The Go-Giver Influencer. It's another story. And I will just say that there, um, there is a large dog named Solomon in the story. There is a small Russian blue cat whose name I cannot tell you yet. Although <laughs> I, know, I know what it is, but it's a secret. And uh, we're really excited about that. We'll be coming out with that in the spring. Uh, I'm working on another book with Brandon Webb, my Navy SEAL sniper friend, called mm-hmm. Mastering, Mastering Fear. Oh, wow. Uh, excited about that. Uh, and I'm working on a few other parables with a few other writers, and I can't say who, but it sure is going to be fun to bring those out. Oh, I cannot wait. And as soon as you're able to talk about them, we want to know because my and goodness. And I'll say, I, I promise you I'll tell you, and I'll also add this. Mm-hmm. If enough people buy the recipe, Chef Charles and I already have our, an idea for the sequel. So we, we are not finished uh, we just we need to have proof of uh, proof of concept, which is that the recipe itself needs to gain enough of a uh, readership, and then we'll say, okay, there's people out there who want this. We we have the next installment in store. Did Chef um, Charles tell you the proof is in the pudding? <laughs> the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Well, I tell you yeah. what, he does he, he does say this. He does say, I've never seen anybody eat as much as John Mann. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was normal. What can I say? <laughs> hey, like when food. someone's cooking that good, I mean, culinary Olympics. I mean, I told he's... you I'd get back to this. I told you, and, and here it is. Mm-hmm. Cooking with Chef Charles is so fascinating, and it's not because it's razzle dazzle. It's like you expect, you know, this this masterful chef to do this razzle dazzle stuff. It isn't that. It's watching him make food is like watching a potter make a pot with clay. It's just like he it, he uses his hands a lot. It's like it's just 
he is so comfortable with the food. It's like watching a great teacher with a room full of kids. It's like watching a master violinist hold his bow and his violin. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really inspiring. Not how dazzling and impressive it is. That is inspiring, but it's just how comfortable he is with the food, how familiar he is with the food and how much he loves it while he's cooking. He'll be stirring something and and he'll taste it. He'll go, Oh, he groans. And you can see how much he just loves what he's doing. And I found as a cook, I found it totally inspiring. It isn't, it wasn't intimidating. It wasn't like, Oh, I'll never be as good as he is. It was like, Oh, right. I get it. This is love. This is passion. I got it. I can do that. Mm. Well, and there's something to be said. I mean, you can make food really razzle dazzle that, but Mm -hmm. when you get to the basics and, and you are just, you have this passion for what it is that you do, it shows in everything. Yes. It does. How you do anything is how you do everything, and it shows. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Well, and so, John, where can people um, go and get their own copy of the recipe? Well, of course, it's on Amazon hardcover, ebook, audiobook. I do the audiobook reading myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, it's, it's also available everywhere. I mean, it probably isn't sitting on every bookstore shelf, but everywhere online, you can buy books, Mm -hmm. you can buy this. Uh, people can also, if they ever forget what it's called or want to look at what I wrote or whatever, you can always find it on my site. And my site is just my name, John David Mann, two ends.com. Well, I have ordered my hard copy of this book. I love it. And, um, again, it's one that will stay on my bookshelf forever. And I will be purchasing many of these as far as copies of these for friends for the holidays, because it's just, it's just such a heartfelt story. It's something that people would want to read. So I can't, I can't wait to get the copies and start to wrapping them up. (laughs) Ah, Well, thank you. I so appreciate it. (laughs) Well, do you know, John, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Are you kidding? I love it. I love being here. I appreciate your having me. Well, that's the end of our time today. Don't forget to pick up your own copy of The Recipe by Chef Charles Carroll and John David Mann. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.